In this video, I'm going to go over a bunch of different LED halo types so you can decide which halo is right for you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so for this video, I'm going to be going over different kinds of halos. Uh, there's so many of them out there, sometimes it's a little bit hard to know the difference. Switchback, RGB, addressable. Uh, and then there's RGB, RGBW with an addressable, and just all the different ideas of options of what you can run. Uh, I'm going to try to simplify that as much as possible uh, by showing you some of the many different types that we have. Um, so what I have here is actually our uh, 80 mil uh, halos. And as you can see, I have quite a few different... Uh, uh, they're all the same size. A lot of them look similar. Uh, most of them are coded. Uh, but I do have some uh, one here that is not coded, uh, just to kind of give you a broad idea of the halos that we sell and that we include, um, and so that you can uh, make a better decision as to what type that you want to get yourself. Um, so to start with, I would say uh, probably our most common, and I actually got to look because they're so similar, uh, is this one here. Now, this halo is your uh, SK6812 RGBW 5 volt. Um, th these are really common for us. We saw them a lot. This is that addressable stuff. This is the stuff that's going to flow in a, uh, in a pattern. Um, so you, sometimes you hear it addressable. Sometimes you hear it called color flow. Uh, NeoPixel is another uh, name for it. Uh, that's actually where Next Level Neo came from, is the idea of a NeoPixel uh, the um, it might even be the original name for the addressable LEDs, um, but uh, many different names for it. And uh, we'll turn that on here in just a second. So you can see, uh, I've got the one going here. Um, and uh, that is our standard 80 mil 5 volt halo that we have been selling for quite a while. Um, next up would be our uh, replacement uh, this is not really a place, more like an upgrade. If you want to go a little bit further, um, we're not yet going to be phasing out the the older versions um, as we add in the new ones. Uh, but you can kind of see the difference here. Uh, variation, I don't know if I can turn this down a little. Maybe it'll pop a little more on the camera if I can turn down that brightness. It's about as far as I can go. Um, but it gives you an idea on the halos themselves. Uh, this one is a lot better diffused uh, than this one um, because we actually have more LEDs in this one. So this one, uh, uh, for the, it's, it's about 30% increase in the LED count uh, between the old one and the new. Um, these are both work together. They're both compatible with each other. Uh, they're both compatible with anything RGBW that we have that is uh, addressable or anything like that. Um, but it's going to get you that, that color flow, that look. Uh, in a 5-volt format, uh, the SK6812s, uh, which if you follow a lot of our other videos, we have some uh, different techniques to make them last very long. And, you know, you can have them on your car for many years and not have a single problem. If you follow the basic recipe, um, some people, you know, they don't really want to do all those extra steps. Or maybe you're a little bit confused by it all because there is a lot to it. Uh, in that case, we do have our 12-volt options. Uh, and I have two of them here. Um, so this one we've had for quite a while uh, it is our UCS 12 volt. Now these are a lot more bulletproof. Like you don't even really have to take a lot of those extra steps. Um, the battery saver is more optional. Uh, what I find is that with these, uh, you're going to want to use the battery saver because it will actually, um, the, the battery dying down seems to kill these. Uh, that, that seems to be the number one thing that kills them. And it's not every time. Most of the time you won't have a problem, but it only takes once. So, you know, if your car sits for a while and you have a set of these on your car and you don't have some way to disconnect it from the power when it's not in use, aka the power saver, a switch, a relay, something like that, uh, you will potentially run into issues where these will get like a dead LED. And I mean, you're talking about, you know, it'd be like one LED on the entire halo that went out. Uh, but, you know, you got 30 LEDs on there. One goes out, it's still an issue. So... Uh, it's something to consider. Uh, we do offer two-year warranty on these halos, so you know we'll stand behind them. 
Um, but, you know, as with anybody, you want to minimize uh, the risk for having to take your lights apart, open them up, pull them off the car, deal with all that stuff. Nobody wants to deal with that. So uh, the power savers, things like that, uh, power surge suppressors are another great way to help protect. Uh, but I would say definitely a power saver, number one. Uh, surge suppressor is a good second alternative, or, uh, well, add-on with the power saver. I would actually run both uh, when using the 5-volt stuff like the SKs. Um, but the combination of that, I've put them on cars, and all of my builds get the uh, get the power saver, which really helps, makes a big difference. Um, and I do it on all of my builds, and it they hold up really, really good since I started doing that. Before I did that, yeah, it was hit or miss. Some of them would go for years, no problem. Some of them not. And I think it just depended on the car. If it got driven every day, it didn't seem to have the issue. This is where it goes back to the idea where power draw, when it when any, when the battery of the car comes down to like 8 volts, uh, it seems to send a little bit of a shock. You can actually test this on a bench if you have a voltage uh, uh, adjustable power supply. You could turn that voltage down, and when you get to about 8 volts, they start flickering and going crazy. Um Imagine just leaving it on that for a couple hours. The results eventually are not going to be good. Um, and that's one of the uh, uh, downsides to this kind of the addressable halos. They are drawing power at all times. So uh, definitely something to keep in mind if you use those. But the alternative, if you're looking for something beefier, something that is a lot less likely to have any issues, the UCS 2904s. They take a heck of a lot of abuse. I, I don't even... <laughs> It's, it's kind of nuts just how much they'll take. But uh, So this is our one that we've been selling for quite a while. This is a uh, UCS 2904 Halo. Um, kind of the, the, the pros and cons between the two. These are addressable every LED. So that means that it, every single LED has its own address within the controller. So the controller can control each LED individually. Whereas if you switch to the UCS, uh, being that they are 12 volt, it is... Every three LEDs is controlled by one address. So it can be a little bit more blocky. So if you think about it like the Ghost Controller, that means that this Halo would have 30 addresses uh, across the Halo. This one has 39 because we went up by 30%. And this one has 10. So even though this one has 30 Halos or LEDs just like this, it actually has uh, less addresses. So it can be a little bit more blocky. So that's something to consider. Um, the pros to this one is that it is uh, the UCS 12 volt, uh, no need for inverters, which is great. So it doesn't even need to be a 12 volt regulated. That's just how beefy these things are. They'll work anywhere from like 10 volt clear up to 18, 19 volts, and they'll keep going. No cars are not going to put out 19 volts, so you won't even have to worry about that. Most of the time, the alternator running, you might peak at like 15, 16. Um, but uh, that, that's kind of the separation between that. Now, Recently, we were able to get our UCS in a diffused format. And these have been recently added to the website. Um, so as you can see, i got four different options alone on just the addressable RGBW. Um, so quite a few different options there to begin with. And once again, the addressable color flow, uh, you know, whatever terminology you want to use for it, it basically is the moving animations within a halo. Um, yes, this is this is kind of a hard one. Now, personally, you know, let's say if I'm going to build a build, I'm probably going to go with this one. It's a little bit brighter than the UCS because there is nine more LEDs on that ring than what we have on the UCS. Um, I'm probably going to stop using these, and it's not because they're bad or anything. It's just that if I'm going 5 volt, I'm going to go with the 80, uh, the um, the new one with the 30% increase in LEDs, uh, or I'm going to go with the 12 volt just for that extra reliability. Um, and time will tell. But like I said, the the combination that I'm using right now with power savers and things like that, uh, I've not really been noticing an issue. Um, the five volt stuff seems to draw less power as well. So if that, you know, if you got a ton of halos on a build, you're planning on running it at car shows for long periods of time, uh, the five volt will draw less power than what the 12 volt will. So that's something else to consider. Um, it's not drastic the difference between them. I don't think it's something that would force me in one way or another. I think ultimately it's the brightness and diffusion of these new ones that we have that really 
sets it apart for me. Um, and on the back side of all of them, you do have output pads as well. Uh, and uh, we are now, uh, now in the, we're going to slowly transition out all the old stuff, all new halos that we're getting in, replacement of old inventory, replacement of, you know, when we sell stuff out. Uh, from now on, we're going to not be using the glue on the back side. Uh, I know a lot of you guys like to um, remove the wires from the back and things like that. We used to be adding the glue, as you can see on this one here, uh, to the pads uh, on the, the, well, the, the input side where we've already attached the wires. The reason for that, it just did provide a little bit more secure uh, for the wires to attach to the back of the halo. But it's not really necessary. Um, and in the case of people that like to remove the wires and maybe use their own or replace it with something else, it's just going to be a lot easier for you guys than having to try to uh, get that glue off and then, you know, have any number of issues trying to do that. Um, so we are going to be moving to that. Uh, but like I said, I do have to work through a lot of inventory before, but uh, every time that I order new stuff, it will not have that on there. So, you know, you see a new design drop, you see something else. Uh, I believe, yeah, these these we uh, we changed before they were produced. So uh, no glue on the back of that, no glue on the back of the UCSs. And uh, as we work through inventory, there will be no glue on the back of uh, any of the addressable halos. So that way you guys do have a better access to the uh, wires on the back side if you need to. Um, I will point out something too. A lot of people probably don't notice. Uh, when you're talking about the back side here, don't pay attention to the markings on the PCB. So like in this case, you can see there's a plus sign. Um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Maybe turn it up. Let's see. So there is a plus sign here. That doesn't mean anything, so don't really pay attention to that. Um, what you're going to want to pay attention to is the original wiring that is on the halo. Uh, wherever the plus is, or the, well, the power, uh, the power will be the same on the output pad. And wherever the ground is, the ground will be the same on the output pad. The only difference is going to be your actual data. And in the case, most of the time, for me personally, I actually won't run the power for the next halo through my first halo. I will just run my data out, and then I will run the power separately within the light. I've got other videos going over that, uh, how I do that, uh, splitting you know, the power and grounds within the light so I have 5 volt and 12 volt access to everything. Um, it's just another one of those ways to beef things up and run it a little bit better than you might uh, normally run it. Um, but uh, that is the way that I'm going to be doing it on mine. Uh, once again, you're allowed to use those output pads if you need to. They can definitely take a few halos and you won't have any issues. Um, but, you know, preference as to how you want to go about that. Um, so, yeah, uh, the reason on that power and ground and, and ignoring. So it's going to depend, I think. Uh, so if we look on the back of these two, you can see that the power and the ground are flipped and the reason that we do that is actually so that our halos are mirrored um, let's say you're using something more of a simple controller uh, like our controller the uh, sp105e with the inputs for drls turn signals things like that um, you can actually use that uh, and it will move in opposite directions uh, i think it's kind of gimmicky if you got two lights and they're both moving clockwise or counterclockwise uh, whereas with our halo kits when you get them uh, we mirror the halo so that means there is a right halo left halo now you can flip you know whatever you want if you want one side going clockwise the other going counterclockwise or flip them around that doesn't matter but they are different so let's say if you're running a couple halos in a light you got uh, two pair of 80 mils let's say and you're going to run uh, a quad setup you are going to want to keep note of which halo is where if you're using the uh, well, the SP especially, but even with the Blue Ghost, if you use some of the modes, it might turn off your uh, your block section where it's you know flowing. Um, in that case, it's going to look better if both halos in each light are going the same direction. So 
uh, keep that in mind if you are using multiple kits within a light uh, that feature that we've added which i think it it does make the builds look a little bit better and cleaner um, but it is something that you do want to keep in mind when you're working with those halos um, so that's addressable got that covered what else uh, a lot of people don't want the addressable um, color flow neopixel once again many different names for it uh, maybe they want something different well uh, that's where we have a few different options uh, one of the options that we have is our switchback halos now switchback halos are pretty simple in design uh, installs easier uh, they're generally a little bit cheaper too uh, and you don't need any extra controllers so this is going to be a little bit more for your uh, like oem plus kind of thing um, where you just want a clean looking halo and you want to just run your running lights and your turn signals um, so it's a very simple design um, it's got a somewhat of a short plug i usually hide the driver inside of the light and then run this to wherever the um, you need a ground you need uh, the drl signal and a turn signal um, and i'll usually just run that to those uh, locations inside the light if i can and if not i can run the wires outside the light to the back side and that way the driver's inside the light it keeps installation as minimal as possible um, you know cluttering the engine bay if it's not necessary there's no reason to do it and these drivers are very small so uh, you shouldn't have to but as far as actual function goes, that is just a 12 volt source. Uh, so I've got a ground and I've got two powers. The red one is for your DRL. Um, these are bright. They are very well diffused, even more so than our new SK6812s. Um, there's even more LEDs on it. I think it's closer to like 40 or 50 uh, LEDs on the uh, 80 mils um, and obviously the, the LED count will depend on the size of the halo you get um, but uh, these have a, just a, a simple white and it's a very nice white very uniform looking white um, and then the turn signal and it's switchback function so if you have the DRL connected the turn signal will override the DRL once the turn signal is off it will go right back to a white and this is what you call a simple switchback um, and it is a very nice uh, add-on for a basic build if you're trying to keep the budget low, but you do want to add a little bit of flash. Um, this is a great way to do that. Uh, you won't have any RGB. You won't have any dancing modes or any of that. There's no Bluetooth control. It's just very simple function, uh, but it does help to elevate a build beyond just a very basic build. Um, so we do offer those. I use them on a few builds myself. If I have somebody looking for something a little bit more simple, that's a great way to go. Next up would be our rgb halos now we have put a lot of effort into this design uh, i do have another video going over it in much more detail um, but the install very simple on these uh, it comes with the halo and a wire with a rubber grommet on it so it's very simple you just drill a hole for the grommet into the light this part comes out the back of the light with the waterproof connector that we use. The waterproof connector will connect to our controller outputs. And we do have two outputs. So you have a halo for each light, and then you have an output for each. And then you also have a turn signal wire that is connected to that output from the controller. So you would just connect this to the that just like that very simple install the other side is shorter and it does include both a drl and a turn signal wire and they are both marked drl and turn um, the bluetooth controller is contained within the box which makes it very nice and simple and so when it comes down to function um, the way these work You have your basic RGB function like that. Right now it's just in red. Uh, I can pull up the app, change it wearing colors I want, music modes, uh, different things like that. It uses the Magic uh, LED uh, V2 if you have an iPhone, but uh, just the Magic LED app. Um, 
and it uh, or Magic Light. I'm sorry, Magic Light app or Magic Light V2 if you're on iPhone, um, and it works very well. Uh, and then the best part, so for you know RGB modes, great everything. You can turn it on and off within the app. These don't draw any power as well as the switchbacks. They do not draw any power when off, so that's another huge benefit to it. There's no real need to add any extra things like the power savers. Um, but with ours, we do have a built-in DRL mode, and that will override the uh, the RGB mode as well. So uh, if you do have RGB set, and maybe you forget about it, you jump in the car, you get ready to go for a ride, and you don't have to worry about the cops pulling you over or anything like that, it will automatically go to white and then the switchback function as well uh, and that switchback is uh, side specific so uh, as you can see there nice bright once again very well diffused we were able on these to use the same kind of LEDs that we use in the switchbacks um, so even though they are RGB so it's a different LED but it's the same size um, so we were able to get a very very clean diffusion uh, and it just looks so so uniform we put a lot of time and effort into the development of these halos um, there's obviously you know a few different styles on the market uh, you know amazon ebay sells a few things as well um, we really think we've nailed it as far as the design goes on the rgb halos because um, they they take the benefits of what the switchbacks had they add that rgb to it um, and we take it a step up from a lot of other brands that are out there um, so definitely worth checking out. Uh, the price tag might seem a little bit of a shock if you're coming from Amazon or eBay or things like that, but the value is there. Uh, if you consider everything that's included, uh, especially if you're just doing like a single halo in a light or something like that, these are really hard to beat. Um, if you're doing multiple halos, uh, we also have strips that match these halos. You can mix and match. Uh, and you will have a driver for each set of whatever you're running. You know, two halos, you're going to have two drivers, but it is a combo, so everything is all in one. So you have this one box that has everything inside of it. There's no extra drivers. There's no extra grounds you have to run. Uh, we do include the DRL with it, and the controller is built inside. You can match these controllers to others. So if you have two or three of these boxes, even more if you have them, um, you can go within the app and you can actually control them individually or you can sync them all together and control them together. Uh, the app is, is pretty good for that and the ability to be able to control everything. So um, there are some other controllers out there that have multi-channels. Um, this basically does because of the way that it connects to the controller. Um, while it's not actually like a three or four channel controller, two channel, uh, it is in the way that it functions within the app it will work that way and if you consider clutter overall um, versus some of the other options you might have a controller box and then you'll have a driver box for each halo and the driver boxes need the grounds to be run and you know a bunch of other stuff uh, plus they usually use JST plugs uh, there you know might be a few others that don't um, which is not ideal because of water and things like that that might get into the connections uh, that is one of the reasons, once again, we've added for the uh, the easy uh, connects here, quick connects uh, for the waterproof barrel plugs. Um, and that's one on each side. We've added the DRL, which is something that seemed to be missing from a lot of the other brands out there. Um, we just felt that it worked better on an actual car to have the DRL worked in. And once again, that can be off. So I will open up the app here. Hold on a second. And the app does have a feature where if you do not connect to it within like a minute of uh, connecting it to power, it will not let you log in. So it, it's a nice feature because it will stop other people from attempting to log into your lights and, you know, change settings or something like that, um, which is a, a very nice feature to be able to have. So go in here. I had to set a couple settings there. There we go. So as you can see, I got a blue now. I'll try to let's see if I can move my picture over there. There we go. Okay, so I got a blue. There's my green, white. You change it all on the fly. There is a color wheel, which makes it very nice to be able to set any colors that you want, and you can pin them down in the bottom. 
Uh, there are different functions. You can do uh, different, you know, gradual fades, which are kind of cool to see. Um, there's a music mode where it will actually uh, dance any music that you load up. Uh, custom modes, disco. Disco is more like a microphone, so if there's music going in the background, you can do that as well. Um, but you know, having that option, but then just as simple as pushing the power button, it's off. It's not drawing any power. I don't have to worry about the battery dying on the car uh, because of this. Um, you will draw a very little bit for the controller itself that's built in, but it's insignificant. It's nothing to, nothing to be concerned about. Um, but then, as soon as you jump in the car, you get ready to go for a ride. You get power to the DRL wire, and it'll turn right on. So it'll work just like a switchback in that sense, but with the RGB added upgrade to it. And a fairly minimal addition to the install setup. Just this box. This wire is long enough to go to the other side of the car, and then you have the short one that is meant for battery side, whatever that may be, driver, passenger, wherever that is. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty nice setup. Uh, if you're trying to get a little bit somewhere between the switchback and the full-blown color flow stuff, uh, I, I specialize in color flow. I do a lot of color flow myself. Um, but, uh, you know, I can kind of see going either direction, uh, depending on what you're what you're wanting to go for, um, we have an option for just about everything. And beyond that, you've also got options for many different shapes that we offer uh, across the board. Um, obviously, our color flow has a lot more shapes and options than the other two, but we do have a lot of options in the switchback, and we do have a lot of options in the RGB. Uh, as popularity for the different formats increases, we will increase our offerings as far as shapes go. Um, and if there is a shape that you'd like to see, by all means, reach out. If we get enough interest in it, it's definitely something we can add. Um, but, you know, we're trying to do the most that we can with what we bring in at this point to, you know, hopefully expand, uh, offer more stuff for you guys, and new stuff. Always trying to bring out some new stuff. So um, we definitely appreciate all of you guys' support. Uh, appreciate your support on the channel here uh, as we try to, um, you know, share our products and things with other people. The more interactions that you guys make to the channel, the more likely other people are to find our products, um, which helps us to grow in return. So uh, we definitely appreciate that. Um, and uh, definitely appreciate you guys watching the channel. Um, so uh, put it in the comments. Let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see. I'm going to start trying to do more videos. Um, to you know, kind of kind of give you guys a little bit more of the behind the scenes, what I do, how I do what I do. Um, I, I do so much stuff that I've been doing for years that I don't really think about it sometimes. You know, maybe it might be really simple to me, but it's something you guys want to see. If that's the case, hey, no problem. We can get on the channel. Um, I know I've had some requests for like an, another taillight video, and that's something I do want to get done at some point here soon with the five mil LEDs and things like that. Maybe a little bit more involved videos on some of the builds that I do. Um, so, you know, let me know what it is you guys want to see on the channel, and we'll make it happen. Um, and uh, for any of your lighting needs, by all means, check out nextlevelneo.com. We do have discounts for dealers, so if you are a licensed builder, uh, please reach out, and we can get you hooked up with that to help you save a couple bucks. Um, and uh, once again, we definitely appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. It greatly helps the algorithms on YouTube to help other people find our channel. Thanks.